So as the rest of the world talks about useless nonsense that has no significance to our life, it doesn't even mean jack shit. We are involved in a proxy war, a cold war that could turn into a very hot world war at any moment at any time. Just thought I would make this video to give you a reminder and give you just the latest geopolitical updates of the crazy insane situation unfolding right in front of us. So as you're talking about Drake and Taylor Swift and Carrie Perry attending their fucking birthday and doing some dumbass fucking bullshit, we have Vladimir Putin who just made this statement to the world stage. He has brought such an aggressive rhetoric and aggressive position in our country, in relation to Russia, all those who want to work together. I think it's a mistake that we need to fight with someone constantly. And in this way, we can create a threat for ourselves and for the whole world. We will realize our threats and the rhetoric of Russia in relation to Russia from the side of Mr. Clinton, if she becomes the president of the United States. Obviously, letting the world know who he views as a favor in the U.S. election. This on the heaps of Cold War 2.0. We understand why, because Hillary Clinton is a political candidate with her main objective being to call for a no-fly zone in Syria. She says this on the world stage because she says she cares about the Syrian people. She wants to end this conflict. She wants to make sure the people don't die inside of Syria. But in secret Goldman Sachs speech, Hillary Clinton admitted that the no-fly zone would actually kill a lot of Syrians. And because of this no-fly zone that's being propositioned by Obama and promised by Hillary Clinton that won't save any lives, many experts, many U.S. generals are saying that this will lead to a direct world war with Russia. As we covered previously on this channel, Russia and the United States have walked away from the negotiation table, and right now Russia has just ruled out a truce in Aleppo. They will not accept this no-fly zone and are actually deploying the largest naval force since the Cold War for Syria right now. They are also sharing intelligence with Turkey in order to go after radical Islamic terrorists and the rebel groups who are trying to get rid of Bashar al-Assad. Now, as The Sun wonderfully points out, Vladimir Putin's Satan nukes would wipe out America's East Coast in minutes should World War III break out, experts warn. Now, these are called Satan nuclear warheads because they could wipe out their entire East Coast because they have a payload that's a thousand times more powerful than those atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan. And not only does Russia have an impressive military arsenal of nuclear weapons where it could match the United States, it also has a sense of humor with Russia saying that they want to offer a helping hand in overseeing elections so they cannot be possibly rigged. With this happening, of course, the DNC, Barack Obama, and the establishment are pushing hard against the Russians, blaming them for the recent hacks that they have endured. We even had Hillary Clinton say that it was 17 intelligence agencies that confirmed that this was Russia behind the hacked Hillary Clinton emails, but that is utterly not true and just a made up lie. And it's not only the rhetoric on the American side that is heating up, they are also running out of options and thinking of insane strategies like arming Syrian rebels against Russian planes and artillery. As we know, the United States, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and Turkey in the beginning of the Syrian revolution armed the rebels. Those weapons, those arms, those intelligence, that money, your taxes actually went to a lot of radical Islamic terrorists, including al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, and ISIS. With all these options running out, NATO is actually continuing to prepare for war with Russia and they have just sent 300 soldiers to Norway and this is the first time in 70 years that Norway has allowed foreign troops on their soil to cooperate and work with them. As we know, Norway is very closely situated next to Russia and obviously this will piss off the Russians even more. And to end today's optimistic video, we have Zero Hedge that actually wrote this article, quote, it is time for another world war in two charts, showing how public debt and the percentage of the GDP rise during World War I and World War II were correlated with the freaking economic situation that is very similar to what's happening right now. In my opinion, to me, I wish these two countries would stop being bullies and stop being babies and just settle the f down and stop engaging in this escalation of insane proportions against each other. I mean, for f sakes, why are we so close to World War III? Why can't we just all agree to stop killing and bombing each other? Oh yeah, there's a thing called the military industrial complex that actually runs a lot of our political system and companies like Lockheed Martin pay Hillary Clinton to sell more arms and weapons. More arms and weapons, more divide and conquer, more war, more profits for these f***ers. And this divide and conquer 
wake up, check out wearechange.org, and of course support us on wearechange.org forward slash store because without you, we cannot survive. Get this message out, for God's sakes, no one's talking about this on the mainstream media because obviously it is showing a very bad light of the United States foreign policy, which we have not been talking about, but need to because for do I even have to explain this? We're fucked. But wait, what's Drake doing? So social planning at its best with lines down the block for just basic necessities, lying down the blocks for public transportation that is insufficient, you know, and then a lot of people talk about the toilet paper with the government setting up a set price so poor people could afford a um, toilet paper. N there's no toilet paper in different stores. Uh, we were, you know, obviously we didn't face that same amount of uh, suffering as the average people here do, but we're trying to 